Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in again. I'm the Pigment Fairy, and today I'm going to be talking about DNA. This is an especially personal piece for me. Fun fact, I'm adopted. I actually painted this while I was waiting on my DNA results. This ended up leading to a whole slew of events like meeting my birth dad, finding out some crazy facts about my, my, my bloodline, and all other crazy events. I can't wait to tell you about it. Thank you so much for joining me again. If this is your first time here, I'm the Pigment Fairy, and I'm here to encourage those sparkly dreams inside of you through art and inspiration. So let's get to it. So this is DNA. It is 48 by 30 inches. So that's four feet by two and a half feet, I believe. I'm a painter, not a math person, and it's simple math, I know. <laughs> okay. A little embarrassing. This is actually going to be mixed media on canvas. I use acrylic paints for all of my paintings um, as my base coats especially and then the other paintings as well. I did a whole lot of steps. The first thing I did was I drew it out my little DNA strand with a pencil. Don't press too hard on a canvas with a pencil you could poke a hole in it. The way I choose my colors I have like a lot of basic colors and I like to mix them myself and um, for each color I mix it until I feel peaceful about the color and until it makes me really happy. That sounds weird too, but that's okay. Weird is cool, guys. Or be normal, that's fine too. As long as you're yourself and you're happy, that's what matters. How did I do this? Um, I did my acrylic base, it's really loud outside. Actually, before I did anything, I took this stuff called molding paste. It's a pretty cool, like, sticky thing that makes it raised and thick. And then um, I used my finger <laughs> to, <laughs> to put it and trace out the thing that I, the DNA strand, like the abstract kind of DNA strand that I drew. And then after that, I mixed all my colors and I started doing them and I like to, I like to blend and, and, and all of that. Anyway, so the next, the next stage was I put this stuff on this right here. This is, um, it's very textured and this is called extra coarse, extra coarse pumice. So I, I took my hands and I dipped it in the jar and I actually, I should have used gloves. If you use this stuff, it kind of hurts your hands. So actually, use gloves. Don't do like the pigment fairy. <laughs> so I actually went and I, and I spread it all the way over and I had to let it dry for a few days. And then I went and I mixed my acrylic paint on top of it again, coming from each side. The next step is my favorite. I used fairy dust. Um, actually, it's this stuff. This is my fairy dust. It probably looks really sparkly on camera. Gold and colorful coppery flake things. What I did was I actually take some regular glue spray and then I, then I sprinkle my dust on there and I like do this thing, blosh it back and forth. It dries within 15 seconds. If you want to see a video on how I do the pigment fairy dust, make a comment in below. In the, make a comment in the comments. <laughs> From there, um, this stuff, it looks like watery, goopy things. Um, it's colliding into this DNA strand. Uh, this is gold, and that's like a, a coppery bronze metallic paint. I forgot exactly what I used, but I can figure it out. Um, so I took metallic acrylic paints, and I mixed it in with a little bit of water and this stuff called string gel. Now with string gel, it makes it, it keeps it kind of wet looking and goopy. And I just like splattered it all in there. So up here, if you look, there's like these droplets over here and they look like they're actually still wet and dripping, but they're perfectly dry. That's a lot of talking. <laughs> but in all honesty, um, when it was complete, it's kind of around the time that I got my DNA results back. Now, as I said, I actually painted this while I was waiting on my DNA results. Um, I am 
adopted. I've always known it. It's never been a secret. Like I've never, you know, I didn't wake up one day and I was like, oh my God, I'm adopted, what? No wonder I don't look like you or my sister. No, they were just open about it and told me this beautiful story about how they couldn't have children and they tried and it just wasn't in the cards for them, but they really wanted to raise somebody. They really wanted to raise children. And so they adopted myself and my sister. A lot of people will ask somebody who's adopted, um, oh, well, do you know your real parents? I'm like, yeah, they're raising me. I love them. Whenever I paint, it's kind of a therapy. It takes me through different periods or, and it's almost like a, a spiritual journey for me. <laughs> As an adoptee, you kind of grow up with this odd sense of um, wondering, you know, like where your heritage comes from, what created my pigments, right? There was this one thing that kind of nags me and it's not about, ooh, I'm searching for love or anything like that because I grew up with plenty of love. When you're adopted, you never actually see another human being that looks exactly like you. You see other people and people say, oh, you look like this person. You look a little bit like Lady Gaga. I love Lady Gaga. If I looked like her, I'd be really happy. She's so pretty and amazing. If you don't like Lady Gaga, I'm sorry, but I, I do. She's awesome. Different people will randomly tell you, oh, you look like such and such. Do I know you? And those things feel extra weird for somebody who's adopted because you're like, I don't know, like, do you know my birth family? That'd be awkward and cool and I don't know how to feel about that. Could that person be related to me? I'm babbling a lot. As I was waiting on my DNA results, I was painting this. Now, painting is kind of a, a therapy for me. It helps me work through different things, kind of like you. A lot of you are artists. You, whether you're a singer or a writer or an actor or a painter, art is there to help heal and inspire you. You see how these are, these are all colliding. So this, this whole strand is colliding together and, and making up this human being, which is me, right? Or you. Who you are is not just, you know, like what's in your blood and your DNA strands. There's so many other things. So I got my DNA results back. And I looked on my computer and I started seeing like all of these things. You're part German, you're lots of Italian, you're lots of Iberian Peninsula all over the place. I'm literally like a mix of everything, it's weird. That was kind of interesting and I was like, well that's cool. So then I clicked over to the DNA relatives results and I was like, ooh, should I do it? I don't know if I should. I was a little bit nervous about this. I don't want to intrude on anybody, you know? Like I don't want to, what if I'm this big dark secret in somebody's life and I don't want to hurt anybody. So, you know, it was, it's kind of a big deal to make that choice. And if you're an adoptee and you're, you're on this journey, whatever stage you're in, if you're, if you just found out you're adopted, if you just really genuinely want to find out who you're, you know, who your birth parents are, if you wanna know that story. Whatever reasons you have, do it delicately. Everybody has lives. Don't judge yourself for whatever needs you have. If you never decide to take that leap, it's okay. Speaking of leaps, like whether you're looking to leap into finding you know, out who your birth parents are, or if you're trying to take a leap of faith to find, you know, to jump into your dream, you want to write that novel, you, you want to start taking acting lessons, you want to apply to that big corporate job that you've had your eyes on forever. I don't relate that much, I love art, but I applaud you and you should follow that dream no matter what, you should take that leap. I talked to my sister and I decided I'm just gonna do it. So I clicked. And it was very anticlimactic because all of a sudden, pff, right there, I had a DNA match with a grandmother. Not only a grandmother, an abuela from Puerto Rico. <laughs> Suddenly, I find out I am half Boricua, which I just found out like a year ago what that even means. Okay. It was the first time I'd ever seen somebody that looks like me. I kid you not. It was like looking in a mirror 40 years from now. I, I went on Facebook. I decided to do a little research. So I had a letter from my birth mom growing up. And um, so I knew like a little bit. So I knew like their first names. I looked up her really long name on Facebook. I just scrolled and I found that um, she had a son with the first name 
of the person that I knew was in this letter. It took me like a week and a half, two weeks. No, actually it was a few months. Yeah, before I got the guts up to um, contact him. I also found out through my research that I had a younger brother and a younger sister. So I messaged him. It took me a long time to get the guts up because I didn't want to disrupt anybody. If you're thinking about reaching out to your birth family, please keep that in mind. It, it could turn out great. I mean, my story so far is great. I'm so thankful and I'm so lucky, but you have to go into it with the understanding that it might be, it might not turn out how you want it to turn out. You might be a secret. We all have our own journey, right? Um, and if you decide never to reach out, that's okay. If you decide to take a leap of faith and do and just jump in full on, that's okay too. And, and that's what I did. Okay, I wrote this long letter just saying, hey, you know what, if you never ever write me back, it's okay, like I get it. But he did. We ended up talking back and forth, exchanging numbers, and on like the following Saturday, he called me and left me a message. And it was the first time I'd heard his voice. It was so crazy. And he had this cute Puerto Rican accent. It was so adorable. Kind of after that, I ended up meeting him in person. I expected it to be very like, you know, yes, hi, nice to meet you. Oh, good, yes, thank you for your genetics, I appreciate it. But no, it was like, it was like a Hallmark movie, pretty much. Um, we met at a Panera Bread and he stood there and he was this like large, six foot tall, Puerto Rican 50 something year old man, nerves from head to toe, holding this beautiful bouquet of flowers, which later I found out my, um, my little sister had helped him pick out, which by the way, um, I did use those flowers and those colors for inspiration. And um, if you're curious about that, you can check out my other video. It's called Flowers for Mana. And the whole color scheme is based on that bouquet of flowers. He gave me a big hug. Big hug, it's just like It was more of an embrace and we both just started crying. <laughs> oh God, nobody wants to see a fairy cry. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Actually, I found out like my little sister is an artist too. So apparently there's two fairies running around with paintbrushes um, <laughs> with our same DNA, which is kind of cool. But anyway, so I just want to encourage you, if you are looking to take any kind of leap of faith, as long as you are pure and you're doing it for the right reason, then you should do it. Don't deny yourself. You need to let your sparkle shine. Denying yourself smothers your sparkle. And that sparkle is what makes up who you are, not just your DNA. It is the thing inside of you that helps you live and be the artist, the actor, the entrepreneur, the mom, whatever it is that you want to be, protect your sparkle. Yes, that's corny, but it's true. And that is my story. So the question of today, what's something interesting that you learned about from your DNA results. I'd love to hear your stories and go ahead and add those to the comments below. I'd love to, to chat with you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm the Pigment Fairy. I can't wait to join you again. I, can, I can't wait for you to join me again and continue with this crazy journey. I have so many more paintings and so many more things I wanna share with you. If you're interested and you liked what you saw, hit that like button. You know what, even better, subscribe. I would love for you to subscribe and maybe even touch the notification bell. Touch it, press it. What do you do? It's digital. Hit the notification bell so that my, whenever I send out my next video, um, you can watch it. And um, also, if you have any suggestions or anything you want to see, please add that into the comments below. Thank you so much. And remember, always protect your sparkle.